garden boutiques are great places to dig up inspiration or just dream of the backyard that you've always wanted. Today, Rebecca Cole shares one of those local boutiques and says it is a perfect spot if you love getting your hands dirty and thirst for a piece of garden heaven. <laughs> It's touted as the absolute garden experience, and it's true. What once housed a gasoline station once filled with pumps and auto mechanic equipment is now pumping out Minnesota nature. Tingletown Gardens, nestled in the heart of Minneapolis, isn't like any other garden center. Winding paths, living walls of color, architectural sculptures, all purposely positioned in dramatic, eye-catching fashion, sets the stage for nothing short of beautiful and inspirational all part of the vision planted long ago by founder Scott Andrus. We're a small enough business where we can have personality that totally cares about every single square inch of our two city lots here in the city. And it's two city lots that really pack a big punch. You know, you might have, you might start out with basic things, which we have, but then having that unusual conifer or that really, really striking tropical or adding an exclamation point in the garden, which which a typical Minnesota garden might not have. It's really going to maybe bring your garden up a notch. Scott and his partners are fastidious stewards of the land. We're actually selling a living, breathing ecosystem of soil um, where you can see these healthy roots all the way to the end. And the soil itself is very healthy. So all the interesting uh, microorganisms and the mycorrhizae that actually uh, help in a symbiotic way to ensure the success of this plant being transplanted into your garden, into an interesting container. Um, all that stuff is very, very important. But probably what makes Tingletown Gardens stand out from the rest is their eye for design. But why just have a bank of hostas? Take this as a starting point and then work from it. You know, maybe add something that has a little bit finer texture. So maybe some epimedium oh, that yeah. blooms in the spring. It brings out this darker green margin of this more common hosta. Another pairing for this, Love adding it. some Japanese cone grass, adding a finer texture, different leaf form, plays off the variegation of the hosta, certainly still different from the epimedium. And then that combination can oh, lead to the next, the next. So certainly give yourself permission to color outside the lines, but definitely follow the principles and elements of design. Uh, it's what we do here. And you can see their design magic everywhere. So when I think about pairing plants together, I look at the plant itself as a guide sometimes. So like this plant has a coarser texture leaf. Mm -hmm. The leaf itself is just sort of amazing with those, those sort of silvery polka dots. Yeah. So this might be paired um, just in a really interesting container as a specimen, as a house plant, or you could pair it with maybe doing, maybe doing a, a bowl of different kinds of begonias together. So uh, interesting combinations can be achieved right on a garden center cart like this. Find your inspiration, find something that you're really drawn to. Maybe it's something that you've had before, like a pink petunia. Pair it with something that will really bring out the, the charm of that, but make it more interesting. You know, everybody knows what a pink petunia is, but maybe you don't know what um, one of these interesting um, silver grasses is, or a silver falls dichondra, or a swinging linda coleus, or ornamental peppers. Why not? It'd be kind of fun to watch that evolve through the season. So it's never really too late to add that extra exclamation point in the garden. Find the holes in the garden at any time of the year. After this hot spell, there's plenty of them. Even the most, the greenest thumbs have a little bit of trouble sometimes. <laughs> I always never hesitate to infuse vegetables, herbs, uh, annuals, perennials, shrubs, trees, all the elements that Mother Nature gave us in the plant kingdom together because that's how she designed it and she's the best designer. We can learn from that. Speaking from experience, I can tell you that shopping at Tingletown Gardens really works up an appetite. How fitting that just across the street is an extension of their garden. This is Wise Acre. 90% of the food coming out of the kitchen is grown locally on their farms and they have a fresh produce market as well. Between the two places, this is a definite destination location here in Minneapolis. I'm Rebecca Coles, WCCO 4 News. For more gardening tips, go to Rebecca Coles and her Instagram feed. Rebecca will 
a comment back to you. You can chat with her on the Instagram feed. It's a, a great resource. Mm -hmm. And I've been to the uh, farm that Rebecca talked about in Plato. We mm -hmm. did a Derusha Eats out there years mm -hmm. ago. That supplies to the Wiseacre. That supplies yeah. Wiseacre. It's so cool. And Scott it has an incredible eye for design. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful out there. All the, all I mean, the places yeah. he was naming about oh, this yeah. and that. I was like, what? what? I, I, you Tangletown, know, just if you so want. So many of them so out there. Is, the, it's eye candy. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. beautiful out there.